So this presentation is about using OpenAI API in SPFX projects. My name is Sanup. I'm an MVP developer at uh, Content and Cloud based in the UK. And those are my those are the links to my uh, social profiles. So you can follow me on those platforms if needed. Right, uh, so the agenda for today is uh, start with an introduction, then move on to the demo, take a look at the overview of the OpenAI API, uh, how to set it up, how we can integrate that with SPFX, a uh, couple of use cases, and then the code walkthrough, and then we'll conclude. So AI, it has been, it is everywhere. So you open your Twitter feed or LinkedIn feed, you see a lot of posts uh, about artificial intelligence these days. Uh, it is helpful to us in many ways. Take for example, Copilot uh, that have been uh, launched by Microsoft or, or will be launched by Microsoft. Uh, GitHub Copilot that's already there. Uh, we've got ChatGPT. So these are the different examples which you have already heard of. Uh, that use AI and uh, APIs are provided uh, by, uh, for us in order to use AI in our applications. And uh, we will use those APIs in SPFX projects. And that's what we'll be looking at today. Um, so let's uh, look at the demo first and then uh, move on to the code. So if I just go into my uh, dev tenant, uh, what we have here is a a page in SharePoint, uh, which has got some text content, some images, uh, and some text content uh, again. So it's just a normal news article. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and edit this page and add a web part, which is called summarize, and then republish that. And then basically what, what this does is this web part gives us a, a multilingual summary. Uh, so in English, French, Spanish, and Swedish uh, of the text content that is present on the page. Uh, so basically we use OpenAI. Uh, we, we send the content, text content to OpenAI, ask it to give summary in four different languages. And this web part displays the summary in four different languages. So. Uh, now that we have had a look at the web part, uh, let's take a look into the details of the web part itself. So uh, you might have heard of OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Uh, there are some differences to it. So if you just uh, go on the internet and search for differences between OpenAI and Azure OpenAI, uh, you will come to know what they are. Uh, the main thing is both OpenAI and Azure OpenAI provide us uh, APIs which we can use in our projects. Uh, so in, in this particular demo, we'll be using the APIs provided by OpenAI. However, uh, the same uh, can be changed to use Azure OpenAI APIs instead. But whatever it is, before working with production data uh, and these AI, uh, OpenAI or Azure OpenAI, uh, make sure you read the data policies that are uh, given by OpenAI and Azure OpenAI, and then then decide on which one to use and whether they are uh, uh, okay with your company's data policies, etc. So uh, that's one important important thing to remember. Now, OpenAI API, uh, so it's a tool provided uh, by OpenAI, which gives access to the advanced AI models with a simple interface. Uh, it helps us integrate AI into our applications very easily. Uh, the, uh, the AI models use a deep learning algorithm to provide high quality responses to the queries, uh, and it can be accessed through a variety of programming languages. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, you know, look into this open AI and play with it, uh, what we can do is we can simply create an open AI account by going into the open AI's uh, site, and we can obtain an API key, and they've, they've got a playground uh, on the website itself. Uh, uh, with which we can uh, look at the different uh, API endpoints that are provided. Right, now let's look at how we integrate OpenAI API with SPFX. Uh, so what we do is uh, we, are, we have our SPFX projects on the left side. Uh, we use Azure function as the middleware, uh, which, which will communicate with OpenAI. So a request is sent from SPFX to Azure function. Azure function then sends that request to uh, OpenAI using the OpenAI key, and then OpenAI returns the data, which is then uh, provided back to SPFX. So if we just uh, take a look at the details, um, 
So uh, on the SPFX web part, what we do is we get the data, which is nothing but the content of the page, and that content is passed to the Azure function. Uh, the Azure function then constructs something called as a prompt, which we'll have a look in a minute, and uh, that is sent to OpenAI. Uh, by calling the OpenAI API. And then OpenAI uh, uses that prompt, provides us the high quality response, in this case, the summary in uh, different languages. That is returned back to the Azure function. The Azure function then uh, sends it back to, uh, or rather, uh, yeah, sends it back to uh, SharePoint Framework Web Part, which then displays the formatted data in a nice way. All right, uh, some of the use cases uh, of, uh, using OpenAI in SharePoint are, you know, one is uh, the one that we saw summarizing SharePoint page content in multiple languages. Uh, the other use cases might be showing possible titles for a page so that the editors of the page can look at the possible titles and then decide which title to use if if they are okay with the response. The other might be showing possible thumbnails for a page. Uh, so a few thumbnails can be shown and then the editors of the page can to choose a thumbnail and then set the thumbnail of, of the page. Right, L now let's look at the code. So all this code is available on GitHub under the samples repository. What I have done here is uh, opened the the web part and then highlighted uh, the summarize.tsx uh, component, which is a React component. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be navigating through various files and then showing the important bits of the code. Uh, so in the web part, we've got this main component called as summarize.tsx, which I've highlighted. Uh, that particular component has a method uh, uh, in order to get page content using Graph API. So for that, we use the Microsoft Graph Pages API. And then what we do is because we are interested only in the text content, uh, we filter the uh, the content to target only the text web part. So as you can see over here, we are using Microsoft.Graph.Text web part, which gives us only the uh, text web parts present on a page. Uh, so once we have that, uh, we get the content of that uh, of the text web part, uh, and then we need to pass that page content to uh, OpenAI. For that, uh, we use Azure functions. So there's there's a method called as get summary using OpenAI, uh, and uh, this ultimately calls an Azure function. Now, in order to use Azure Functions or call Azure Functions, I'm using a React hook, uh, but this is not compulsory. This is just one of the ways of calling Azure Function. We can call Azure Function uh, directly uh, from the, you know, using other code, you will have a lot of samples which explain that. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm using React hooks, which is called use Azure Functions. So what we do is we get the AAD HTTP client first, uh, and then uh, this particular method that, or this particular piece of code that I've highlighted over here, uh, what that does is uh, it checks whether it's a GET request or a POST request. If it's a GET request, uh, we append uh, parameters to the query string. If it's a POST request, we compose the, the body. Uh, and then what we do here is uh, we call the Azure functions, uh, sorry, call the Azure function uh, by passing in the headers and the body. Uh, and then once we get the response from the Azure function, uh, we just uh, collect that in a variable. Right, now with respect to the Azure function itself, uh, we've got two Azure functions. Uh, one is called as summarize, which gets the data from OpenAI API. And there's another Azure function called as update page, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, so firstly, we'll look at this summarize function. So this particular Azure function gets the page content from the SPFX web part. Uh, so what we do is uh, we could take that content into a variable called as content, uh, and then we need to construct a, a prompt which needs to be sent uh, to the OpenAI. Uh, that prompt is nothing but a JSON. Uh, so what we do is we have to construct that JSON. Um, so I have put that JSON in a file called as data.json. And in that particular JSON file, which we'll look at in a minute, we'll replace uh, uh, the content with our with the content that we have received. So if you look at the JSON file, as you can see over here, uh, it says that we are using a particular model of, uh, the, of OpenAI, uh, and then we have to send some messages and some other parameters uh, to the OpenAI. So the main thing is the message. So in this uh, message, we say, please give us a one short sentence summary in, in all the different languages that we need. 
and then towards the end we've got the content in curly braces and that content will be replaced by whatever content is passed to the azure function uh, there are other parameters as well which we can play with uh, if needed right as you can see over here we get the json and then replace uh, the content in that json and then uh, what we do here is uh, from the app settings we get a couple of uh, couple of settings one is the api endpoint and the other one is the api key uh, once we have that, uh, we go ahead and uh, call this invoke web request. I should have mentioned that this particular Azure function is a PowerShell Azure function, and all these are PowerShell functions. Uh, so we call the invoke web request uh, function uh, by using the endpoint uh, that 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 we get from the app settings. Uh, so which then goes ahead and calls OpenAI API, gets us the data, and then we just format it to get. Uh, you know uh, that data will be nested so we need to get a particular object from that um, nested structure that's what we do over here and then once we have that once we have the summary uh, we, we return the summary back to sharepoint now we don't want to do this every time someone goes ahead and opens a page right uh, so that's why what we do is once we get the summary we store that summary against a, a, a column of the page so the metadata of the page is updated with this summary and how do we do that of course we use pnp powershell to do that so uh, there's another azure function called as update page this this function gets called once the uh, summary is returned back to the spfx web part so what we do in this azure function is uh, simply go ahead and uh, connect to the site uh, so if if we are debugging locally we have to use uh, client ID and client secret uh, but if if you are uh, if we have deployed this in the cloud there are a few options we can use managed identity as well which i quite like very much um, so yeah we we connect to the site and then what we do is we use the uh, we get the the page item and then call the uh, set pnp list item function uh, which goes ahead and uh, updates the value of the of the column in this case the column is summary and we update it with the summary that we have uh, got from openai and once uh, once we update the uh, the metadata we go ahead and publish the page so uh, that's it from code side. And in summary, uh, OpenAI provides us with uh, some APIs. We are, provides us some APIs. We use those APIs in SPFX projects. Azure OpenAI provides us APIs as well, uh, which which can be used instead. And there are other scenarios to explore. Here are the resources that were used. And with that, uh, I hand it uh, over to you, Hugo. Thank you so much. This is a great example. Um, definitely putting a lot of cool tools together. Uh, I'm going to have to watch this demo again, but slow down a few times to make sure I understand everything. Mm -hmm.